Hello and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today I'm unboxing something that's probably one of the most anticipated products of this year. Weirdly, it's a projector. There's a lot of hi-fi and other things that you'll see me unboxing, but this thing really captured my attention. I was lucky enough to see this model pre-release and get an understanding of just how good it is. This projector features some of the best video processing imaginable, let alone in a domestic projector. Some of the most cost-effective quality lenses available and the resolution is perfect, the optics is perfect, the video processing is perfect. Every element of this product is utterly perfect. Now while it is not cheap, it is worth every cent. It is the Sony VPL7000ES home theatre projector, home cinema projector. You can see by its box this is not a modest sized projector. It's huge. It needs to be. It runs a laser lamp at 3200 lumens. It needs to move some air. Its optics is huge and perfect so it needs space to fit that lens. It uses a brand new uh, chipset for its uh, Sony's 4K chip slightly smaller, massively improved, and there's three of them of course to, to give you the primary colours. The optics, the method of uh, producing the light, the way of managing that light, and the contrast that it can create is absolutely second to none. You would have to double the investment to make a subtle, subtle improvement. This is staggeringly good. So. The packaging, what have we got? Um, on one end we've got a wraparound sticker with the model and serial number information. This was air freighted to us so there's a DHL ticket on as well. It's emulated on the other side and the box itself is, you know, other than a line drawing of the projector is relatively muted. It's sealed closed with your classic packing tape. Opening it, really, really straightforward. One of the first things you will see is that the projector itself is, is sitting in the middle of this oversized carton. At no point is it touching the edge. and There's lots of space to ensure that your investment can be delivered to you in one piece. We see in one side um, the remote control. It's a stunning little remote by the way. Um, everything's electric, everything's motor driven, so everything you might want, there's focus and zoom and shift and all of those things on the remote control. The remote has a good fit and finish, but because most of it will, most of us will just use it to turn it on and off, these setups are, are not necessarily needing to be elaborate. You'll tweak a few things of course as you get used to the product, but uh, you don't need an elaborate remote and it's certainly fit for purpose. There's a couple of AA batteries, Sony batteries. Uh, the top layer of polystyrene is very, very easy to lift away. And it shows that it's molded, of course, to the exact shape of the product itself. On the top of the projector, cello taped in place, is the uh, Sony user manual. Uh, this references all of the major setup advice, uh, feature set, um, everything associated with its positioning, its lens, its focus, what it can do, some good advice as far as some uh, content associated with HDR, you know, all in the manual. The projector itself is pretty easy to get out of the box at that point. I mean, it's mammoth. I'll just put it off to one side. And we see in the bottom, obviously, the other half of the polystyrene. We've got a uh, basic warranty agreement and a New Zealand IEC power port. Getting rid of the box, pretty straightforward. And then we look at the projector itself. Now this is where it's wrapped in a sort of a, what I've always called a, a bubble paper. A soft, smooth sort of um, wrapping uh, protection. 
it ensures that the product itself will never get scratched as it might be vibrating around in transit. Taking off that layer and sort of getting rid of it. We see the projector itself for the first time. It's, project it's protected in all sorts of things with um, the sticks, stickers associated with some of the rubs with, that could occur in transit. And it's lovely to see that Sony has added that extra little layer of protection. Removing that protection is very, very straightforward. Again, this lines up with the polystyrene and its main points of contact within it. The uh, semi-sticky uh, product that they utilise means it does not leave any residue on the projector itself. Tilting it over for a second, we see a very elegant uh, logo for Sony, and then their 4K SX. R, D, and their ES logo. Tilting it around, we see the front, which of course is the lens, and if I lean that back, you see that it's protected in freight with a traditional sort of lens cap. The lens itself is one of the best available in any price point. It uses some new innovations as far as the uh, focal and zoom parts much closer to the light engine. Uh, essentially it means that you get greater control over the contrast and with that um, improved performance as brightness and other things like that are less influenced by the optics itself. We see the relatively muted design but with that it hides the uh, air movement required to keep a unit like this cool. Moving a lot of air quietly is an important element of a projector. A howling gale above you in a, in a cinema is hardly going to be uh, an excellent sort of effect, especially during some of the quieter scenes in a movie. So, with the heat involved with the laser lamp and other operations, it needs to be cooled quietly, and it's wonderful to see that they've opted for such a large uh, grill and air movement rather than a howling fan. Spinning it around to see the sides, we see again influence of air flow and at the back uh, more ventilation associated with it as well. There's an infrared sensor at the back and then the uh, side vent and basic control and operation. Now this allows you to, um, using a traditional sort of chog controller and enter sequence, um, navigate rudimentarily uh, the menu associated with the setup so that when you're standing up mounting the projector you can do some quick changes and uh, uh, positional uh, moving of the lens and other things along those lines to get it about right before you then uh, get off the ladder, sit back down and in the comfort of your lounge chair do the finer adjustments. We have the basics of control as far as the power on and off an input selector and a menu as well. Along with a button associated with lens, you tap that and it comes up with focus and uh, move and other things as for, uh, associated with up, down and left, right. And of course again, um, controlled with that chog control. As far as the inputs and outputs, they're very discreet. So you'll see on the side here, we've got a network uh, input. This isn't for streaming, it doesn't have a streamer on board. It's for control and monitoring of this product. It has two HDMI inputs, both labelled 1 and 2. There's a trigger out, a 3.5mm input, and the ability to remote control via RS-232. There's a USB input, and a 35 output specific to an additional box should you need syncing to an RF set of um, 3D uh, glasses. Looking at the base, we see the mounting points associated with ceiling mounts and of course the adjustable feet should it sit on a shelf or something like that. And a big rubber pad to ensure that it's sort of not fixed in place but certainly gripping to the surface itself. Now the projector has, and why I'm so enamoured by it, there are, there are essentially three big things that money buys in a projector and where your money goes as far as improving upon it. The first and most obvious is resolution. This using three of the, of the most advanced 4K chips means it's a native 4K projector. There's no line doubling, there's no wobbling approach, it's a native 4K. So right out of the box it's delivering 
every pixel to you perfectly. Then we look at video processing. Now obviously pictures and everything needs to be built. Not only that from the digital signal that's being sent by the HDMI, but it needs to be manipulated. And this is where Sony has really seen a massive leap in the way that it, it, it is manipulating and operating its projectors. Last generation, and I was really fascinated by the 590 ES, this one now features a new um, A1 Pro um, video processor. It's absolutely stunning. They've also added object-based video processing. So if something is moving, it's identified as movement. If something is dark, it's identified as dark. All of these types of things, static images, moving through static images, and it works frame by frame in real time to deliver the most perfect video processing any projector can deliver. Um, what else? Everything is utterly perfect and comes with Sony's heritage in both video production and presentation with their history in residential projectors. The third thing is the lens and this is where it has the ACF lens. Now this is advanced crisp focus. Now I mentioned about where they position the focus part of it but it's also the quality of the lens. Any light passing through that is going to be influenced by the lenses itself and I think we all understand we've seen uh, on the side of sports field these elaborate cameras to take those amazing still shots. Well, all of that optics is to ensure that it can capture so much light so fast that you get a crisp image in a still photograph. Well, a projector is working in the opposite way. And so the quality of that lens, the size of that lens, and the cost involved in manufacture is massively going to influence its picture. One thing also that Sony, uh, that Sony has done so well with this model is the natural sort of blurring that occurs when most manufacturers concentrate on the easy to keep in focus centralized part of a, uh, a projected image, forgetting somewhat about the edges as it starts to lose a little, of that, little bit of that crispness. With this model, the lens means that it is fulfilling an almost perfect focus across every centimeter of that projector screen, and again, well worth the investment. Um, apart, uh, added to the video processor by the way they've got a new uh, live color enhancement. Now uh, that I might have to look up as far as it goes but it is a wonderful element that they've added to this model and it releases um, the potential of uh, accurate skin tonings and other things like that that most projectors do so poorly. Now there's a fourth element and it's unique to this model. They have a massive laser lamp on board, able to deliver for the first time in any projector of this size, a massive 3,200 lumens. Now it means that you can scale the screen up and end up, uh, you know, instead of in that 100, 120 inch mark and being good, we could, we could easily push this into the 130, 140 inch and still deliver a cinematic experience if required or in a more modest size, deliver just that bit more performance, just that bit more contrast, and it's wonderful to see. They manage that, by the way, so in dark scenes, they're able to control the output of the laser lamp, uh, delivering much, much better blacks as well. So there's an amazing feature set in this that is unique in any price point, let alone in a relatively affordable price for this new 7000 model. The laser lamp, is so good they will warranty the product for five years, 12,000 hours, with an expected lifespan of 20,000 hours for the lamp. So this is a set and forget projector. Put it on your ceiling, watch every movie, re-watch every movie because you will love it so much and enjoy it potentially for the life of the entire unit until you might one day choose to make an upgrade in a decade's time. So there we have it. Sony's brand new VPL 7000 ES native 4K projector unboxed here at the Listening Post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.